My name is Rhapsody, his name is Sneaky Teak, and welcome back to The Letter Streak. How's it going, friend? You immediately rhyming. Mm, yeah, no, I'm going to be rhyming the entire episode. Oh, no, I dropped it. Uh, I'm going to have to not do it from now on. I broke it. <laughs> what was it that you set up last time in the middle of the run? You had a you had a nice little rhyme going. Do you remember it? Uh, Raps and Teak on The Letter Streak, or was it... it, was it, it uh, was Sneaky Teak with his ladder streak and wraps along, along for the, the ride. ride. Yes, that's right. And and but I but I told you we don't go there anymore, Simba. Because it's not fair. <laughs> yeah, exactly. That's that's not right, the kingdom. Right. That's not where the light touches. That's right. So uh, we've got a silent ahead of us here. Is there anything in particular that you are looking for immediately on a silent run? I don't want to give away my hand. That I'm looking for immediately damage. It's the same as the other classes. I've, I'm so so. You know, I should I shouldn't pull back the curtain to the Wizard of Oz too much, but mm -hmm. Rhapsody and I have had some time to speak off stream, philosophically and also in terms of of strategy in this game. Mm -hmm. And I play like every silent card that other people speak negatively on. Ooh. I really like this class. This is my most this is my most consistent class. I did I've done before Ladder Streak. I did a full month of I called it Focus February, and it was all Ascension Twenty Heart Streak kind of practice uh -huh. and this class silent is the class that i won with the most and i think about 50 percent of my heart killing ascension 20 decks had a grand finale in them so that I do is weird stuff something that i class. heard you mention before the grand finale <laughs> the the prepared yeah. uh i yes. i am personally prepared to jump into a different play style here because both of those are uh uh, uh what were kryptonite to the way that i would play <laughs> But you know what? That's okay. And, and what I like is that the class is really flexible. You don't need to play Grand Finale. You just find good front-loaded damage in the beginning of the run to take elites, and then you lean into what's offered to you. Mm -hmm. That's that's the same on every class. And particularly prior to Ascension 18, Silent is pretty competent at taking on early game elites. She feels a little weaker than the other three classes at Ascension 18 and above. Mm -hmm. When elites get stronger, and being able to lean in on things like Wrath Form or Vulnerable really take you a long way to take down Gremlin Knob. Mm -hmm. But prior to that, I mean, access to a couple key damage cards like Dash is such a dense card. Masterful yes. Stab is a card I take fairly often, actually. Mm -hmm. You can take the Cloak and Dagger easily when you're not as worried about Gremlin Knob scaling. She just has such a good damage and block kit in the early game in commons and uncommons, so it's a super consistent class. Mm, that that's like one of the biggest things that I I had to uh, change my playstyle for uh, for the silent as I was going through the ascensions, and that's because I I would very much not take a card unless it's exactly what I want for the deck to ultimately be for a very long period of time. Um, that's not how I play anymore. I, I very yeah. much take things that I need at the moment or I will need upcoming. Um, I I think it's particularly I've noticed that people who've played constructed card games in the past have this learning exercise because if you're coming from something like constructed magic the gathering you want your deck to be this precise tool for that final job which yep. is you know whatever beating the heart but in this game you kind of play with your sideboard in the deck all the time and because you're playing an asymmetric game against all of your opponents you can't have a deck that solves one question because it needs to solve every question mm -hmm. and so sometimes you take the masterful stab not because you're excited to have it in act three but because you need to have it in act one right so that's, silent is good at doing that that's a very interesting way to look at it specifically your sideboard is in your deck at all times i think that would be yeah. like the perfect sentence to pitch to any of those people and then they'll go oh i understand it now <laughs> i've i've spent a long time trying to find the perfect sentences to help people understand this game so i'm well, glad it worked you found that one <laughs> i uh it worked. i i'm seeing a path here uh, can I lay out the one that... I mean, we've also Hit got me. these benefits in particular. Yeah, yeah. I, but I like that you're looking at the map first. That's my style. That's mm -hmm. what I like. So, so hit me with your pitch. I'm the ready. the one that I like is uh, enemy fight, enemy fight, question mark. Enemy fight, question mark. Elite, rest, elite, rest, space, <laughs> rest, and then another elite for the rest. Wow, nice. It gets so the, my uh, counter pitch. Emerald elite on the first floor as well is that if I'm trying to take the empowered elite there, I might go one path to the left at the beginning to hit the merchant. I don't love that it's floor two, mm. um, but just seeing a few more potions and attack cards particularly can go a long way towards making sure that you have just enough to get through that empowered elite fight. Uh, and and the odds are you'll roll one fight among those question marks. Yeah, uh, 100%. That's, I'm, I'm super on board with that. Uh, with cool. that in mind, 
Is there any mm -hmm. of these in particular that stands out more for that kind of a path? Um, you know, n no. Um, I would probably take the two card removal just because it's a really strong option. It doesn't make you better at the first few fights that much though, except that taking two defends out of silence deck actually might save you some damage in like a jawworm fight. Mm -hmm. And you can certainly replace it. What I'd be really excited here for would be a rare card or money or potions even. Mm -hmm. um, but I think among these options, the one which I like the most is the third. But none of these options particularly make us great at elites. So you said uh, two defends that you'd remove? Yeah. Interesting. These I'll, are I'll very aggressive plays. It's yeah. it's a very aggressive play, but also like I'm thinking like what cards would I take very early as a silent and like backflip yeah. is huge among them. That's right. And now you can do it because you're not diluting your strike pool, mm -hmm. right? Interesting. Interesting. I'm on board. Also, you obviously have like extra damage mitigation out of your uh, your survivor, survivor and neutralize, right? Mm -hmm. If any class can do this, it's silent because you get a higher saturation of survivor and neutralize. Mm -hmm. But then I think I'm going to say that with every class and then I'm going to remove two defends with every class. <laughs> <laughs> I just, I really, if I'm going to take removals in the start, that's usually what I want to do. What have you got against the defends? That's Don't like their the, art? It's, what it really is, is that a lot of heart play has taught me that classes have other block cards that they really want to be able to draft. Like Cloak and Dagger. That's a great block card. Mm -hmm. And you can easily draft that card right now because there's space for it in your deck. It's still some damage. It's like much, much better than a defend, right? Ooh. Okay. It's too bad to not have money. Mm -hmm. Certainly, I really like Vajra coming out of this store mm -hmm. for a lot of damage. Who's our in boss? I'm sorry, I, I'm gonna always ask this. No, that's a good point. It is uh, the, Guardian. oh God, Infinite Blades gets a huge down because of the Guardian. Yeah, it does. Although we're early enough that that sharp hide is three instead of four, which which does help. Mm -hmm. I, I love this dagger spray. Um, I think it's just good damage in all three of the elite fights. It makes us better at hallway fights too. Mm -hmm. What do you think about possibly picking up an escape plan as well? I think escape plan's okay. This is the kind of card to where I would first focus on all of the other power that I need to get out of the shop, and then if I had money left, I might take it. Um, but it's pretty incidental for this early in the run without something like letter opener to really make it do something interesting. Mm -hmm. Footwork, letter opener, a higher saturation of skills, and all of a sudden escape plan is, is like really doing something. Mm -hmm. um, but right now, I think, as an example, I would probably take the blessing of the forge over the escape plan. Okay. I, I very rarely purchase a Blessing of the Forge. Blessing of the Forge is often times. Yeah. I just, I have it's, it. It's a strike dummy right now. That's all you need it to be. It's just a strike dummy. Hmm. I mean, also, it does have the, the benefit of extending the extra turn on neutralize, yeah. which is huge against Gremlin Knob. Yeah. Or, like, giving you a sweep with Dagger Spray against a key fight, right? Mm -hmm. So we did not see this event last time. What are Did the considerations not? towards this event in particular? No, we saw the other regret event, the uh, the money. Hmm. So I'm, I'm, I really want to try in this content that we're making together to not do what I do on stream, which is just kind of make the decision that I usually make, right? Like mm -hmm. I want to open it up. I will be honest though, at almost every Ascension level, I take Donut 90% of the time. And the remaining 10% of the time is I want to take a more aggressive path through elites and I've already taken damage to the point to where I'm below some threshold and then I take the heal. Mm -hmm. I am almost never taking regret here. Um, yeah. And I'm not even convinced that that's right. I, I, I've, I've done some runs to where I took every curse in Act 1 and they were actually successful. Yeah. Um, so you can do this. Like You can end up snowballing hard enough, but my finding is that it increases your variance a lot and increasing variance is bad for ladder streaking. Yes. I, I would agree. I, I would say that this can be very, very big, but yeah, it's, yeah. it's definitely like not necessarily what you want for consistency. The regret will cost you life, not yes. just in the damage that it does, but in bad draws. It will cost you life. And going into three elites, that's a pretty risky thing to do, right? Yeah, it's it's way too much specifically for the three elites. Like if there was a shop after the first elite, I still sure. probably would take it, Yeah, but there isn't. So max HP it is. Mm-hmm. Gotta go for it. We're, we're about we... where we were at the start, too. That was like, we, we we came out even on those two removals. And one way that I like to explain removals to people on Meow bonuses is 
Empty Cage is a boss relic. Mm -hmm. And I'm not saying it's the strongest boss relic. I'm not going to try to take that position right now. What do you take? Is it the backflip or is it the sucker punch? It's the backflip? Ooh, it's the sucker punch for you. I don't know. I, it might be. It might be. One more weak source means you don't necessarily need to upgrade neutralize. It's it's a decent upgrade in terms of damage. Um, is the it... backflip will be more useful later on if we get to four energy and we have key cards to draw into. Either of them can be successful at Ascension 2, I think. Mm. I... I take really aggressive Act 1s. <sighs> I, I, I'll be more comfortable with aggression in a moment, okay. but, but first okay. backflip is the first one for me every time. Oh, I love this event. Oh, can we talk about this event? I love this event. <laughs> okay, pitch me why you want to transform. I, I take every option in this event. This is, this is why I love it, actually. Ooh. I like events where I feel that there are not just justifications for every pick, but like common circumstances to take every pick. Mm -hmm. I take defend here sometimes if I've taken an aggressive curse line, or sorry, removal for an aggressive curse, curse line, mm -hmm. or if the mm -hmm. deck is just doing really well, or if I'm doing a speed run. I take upgrade when a particular upgrade is really strong going into certain fights, like if there's a, you know, a, a crippling cloud in my deck, such mm -hmm. a good upgrade, right? Um, but I, I frequently take transform, and what I really like to transform here is either if I've had no removals, a defend, or a strike, if you're feeling strong enough. And I do like Transform Strike. And we're sitting on a Blessing of the Forge, too. So Transform is soft removal. <laughs> the average card is going to be better than that strike. So I like it a lot. Yeah, that's that's actually how... Uh, so I, I did a series ages ago, back um, lo long before the game actually officially released, uh, with the yeah. person who actually introduced me to the game, Lolash. Uh, and okay. we called it How to Beat the Spire at the time. Um, mm -hmm. And specifically in this event, the way that he referred to transforming is, is similar to how you just did. You're removing a bad card from your deck and you're adding a wild card that is on average going to be better. It's like yeah. a removal and a draft. And sometimes you'll get like a tactician and you won't be able to use it except for a rare turn one draw. But sometimes you'll get like a corpse explosion, right? Mm -hmm. And now you've solved the elite fights and that's huge. And, and particularly since this content is a bit tutorial, um, Rares are just as likely as commons in a transform. Ooh. But it doesn't just, follow the same pattern of a card reward. But, uh, but cards are weighted equally. They're weighted equally, but surely like there are fewer rare cards than there are commons and uncommons. That's right. Well, not by much. The common pool and the rare pool for each class is about the same. The uncommon pool is the largest. Huh. Yeah. And and I'm I'm gonna be honest, I need to go look this up because I forget if it's it first rare rolls if it's uncommon, common, or rare, and then it rares the, rolls the card, or if it's it rolls all of the cards in a big pool. I honestly cannot remember. Mm -hmm. But the key thing to understand is that you are just as likely to get a rare as a common. And so you will frequently see from this or from Astrolabe, like a Wraith form, and that's huge. Let's see if we find it. I'm just, uh, mm -hmm. I'm waiting for it to come up and then I'm gonna click instantly. I see, I see, the grand finale, I see it. <laughs> no, I clicked on Corpse Explosion. <laughs> you got a distraction, which could be Corpse Explosion. It, yeah, hmm, that's actually maybe, Corpse Explosion in disguise. You're right. Maybe. Let's find out. What did you get? You got a Blade Dance. I don't know about that. Do you... Okay, okay. Here's the, the play Blessing that of I the suggest. Forge attack? Yeah. Fear? Are you going to Blessing after the Blade Dance or before? So, uh, the Shift upgrade is seven damage, right? I think they're... Are they six or seven? I actually don't know. I, I don't upgrade shivs very often. <laughs> uh, Two thousand hours later. Do I have I the I ability to check? I can. I, I think I can, I can go to I can save it quick. It go uh, shiv. I thought they were seven, but They're I might six. be thinking of a base accuracy. Yeah, I'm thinking of base accuracy. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. All right, so we don't have to worry about the rounding of vulnerability. Also, uh, we're playing the vulnerability potion here, right? I think I'm. Yeah, I think I think we made. We might be double potion here. Mm -hmm. I would prefer to just play one. And so the bigger question is, we're going to get Gremlin Knob or tri Sentries next, and they're definitely going to be empowered. So what is it that we need? What are we worried about? As an example, if we just play Vulnerable, can we win this fight and keep the Blessing of the Forge for a long Sentries fight? And the answer is, with no upgrades against Lagavulin, it's going to be a lot of life to do that. Mm -hmm. And both of those next two fights, we can win just with a good health pool. So I, I think I would blow both potions. I think I would blow both potions. And in the uh, in the terms of uh, the blade dance there, I mean, it's the same mm -hmm. amount of damage this turn. It's just the blade dance is better overall later, right? It's yeah. 12 or 12. 
Right, right, right. That's a good point. So if we think we're going to play it again, you might as well upgrade it. Mm -hmm. I, I imagine we'll probably play it again because we've got like three more hands I'm going to guess after this, yeah. two more. Yeah, this is where the micro can get so precise. It's like, am I going to play it again while the vulnerable's still live? Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, I don't think it matters much. I think that's a really strong start. And with neutralize in the draw, I, I might even backflip, right? And then just get back towards survivor, get one good block round in and then finish. My big uh, concern here is <clears throat> not having defense in the redraw. Yes. Yep. Same brain. I'll, uh, oh, <laughs> you were right. We got back to the survivor. What we is sure, this wizardry? Sure it, you got to call your shots. <laughs> oh, hang on. We don't <laughs> have lethal this turn. Late dance always ends up getting played, so I may as well just. Burp, 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 burp. And I guess. I mean, this is still more damage than the strike. Playing. Yep, we're not quite there. But we did well. A seven damage fight. That's not the a bad log of Woolen right there. No, especially considering our deck is... That was probably our worst fight. That was probably our worst fight. Well, this will make us better in the coming ones. Ninja Scroll. Mm -hmm. Start of each combat. Add three shivs into your opening hand. Ooh. Okay. Uh, yeah. I'm not going to constantly just throw to you at the very start. I love backstab. I love front-loaded yeah. damage. I find it very yep. important. Yep. Takes out the target early. Protects you against a huge amount of damage. It might Sold. as well say defend against the first target you kill. Sold. Sold. The the thing that really makes this card pickable, in my opinion, is that you have a built-in bag of prep. Whenever I boss swap with Silent, which I don't do very often, I find the backstab a little harder to take mm -hmm. because you're watering down that opening hand. Yep. But on seven cards and with so much front load required in these first fights, yeah, it's awesome. It does also have a, a little bit of an anti-synergy with one of my favorite uh, defensive cards for the Silent, which is the After Image, because mm -hmm. you end up having an opening hand that isn't doing a huge amount that turn. Yeah, it's uh, true. With the After Your Image after in particular. Image and... That's interesting. I guess it, it's it's like half synergy in that you get the one block. and So my upgrade here, by the way, would be Dagger Spray. I'm happy with the Neutralize upgrade too, though. Mm -hmm. um, neutralize upgrade, I think, is leaning towards... You're basically saying, I think I'm going to beat Gremlin Knob in four turns, and mm -hmm. I want to get more block during those. And the Dagger Spray is, I'm not confident that I can beat Gremlin Knob in four turns, and I also want more damage against tri Sentries. Um, this deck has no damage upgrades in it right now, and we haven't found anything like Skewer or Dash or those kind of denser damage cards. Mm -hmm. So that would lead me to upgrade the Dagger Spray, but we did also pick up Ninja Scroll and Backstab. So I could go either way. I... On reflection, thinking specifically about the Emerald Elite upcoming, I think I'm yeah. more on the side of Dagger Spray now, specifically because if we run into Sentinels that have regen or Metallicize, yes. life is bad. Yeah, yeah. Counterpicking these fights is a big part of consistency and ladder streaking. You're not just thinking about what's generally good, you're thinking about specific enemies, specific modes, specific fights. And that's been a big part of finding more consistency in this challenge for me. Most of the deck left is aggressive, so I'm not going to draw. That's a sweet opening hand. Yeah, <laughs> real, real good. Real, real good. You don't is it roll a distraction it? here, right? I don't, I don't know because because we got the vulnerable roll here, and because this is low enough that it's not plus three strength. I might because if it's like deadly poison, it might actually pay for itself. <laughs> oh, do you ever How use the second distraction? <laughs> How deep does the rabbit hole go? Oh, come on. <laughs> Stop it. Well, well, we're committed now. Something about sunk cost fallacy. It, it gives us a strike to play, I guess. Or a cloak and dagger for the defense. Heck, we can play both. Dagger spray. Well, it's only one energy, right? So. Yeah. I, I would do it. I would... I would probably do it. And that, and then our redraw is like good. One weird thing about Gremlin Knob is once you're above Ascension 18, you like don't get to block against this enemy, but mm -hmm. below Ascension 18, you can sometimes block against this enemy. Um, but it can be, it can be hairy. This is it's why gonna I... hurt. <laughs> it's gonna hurt. It's gonna hurt. But we're trading, we're, we're getting value out of health. We're getting value out of health here, right? With two strikes, we're down to six life plus four. Ooh. We're likely to get lethal next turn if we double strike here. Yeah. And this is just a, a 40 damage fight. I'm just thinking whether or not we can one strike next turn. Because, like, if yeah. we, like, if backflips in the hand, we can guarantee having both. Oh, no, the enemy has metallicized. We have to double strike. Yeah. Yeah. Damn, sorry. 
It's all good. No, I, I think it's good to think about that. Hey, it was painful, but we got, you call it an Emerald Elite, huh? I like mm. that. How many backs would you like to stab today? Are you trying to two like- Two and no more. To be so good. At, okay, okay, okay. Because two of those and the, uh, two of those and the d -d 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 Ninja Scroll, right, is 12, 11, 11, so it's 22 uh, on top of 12, it's 34. Uh, that's enough to take out a shape by itself on the yep. first round. Yep. Yeah, and that's actually really useful for Silent, who frequently struggles with front-loaded damage. Mm -hmm. I love it. I love. I love how aggro this deck is right now. Mm. <laughs> Ooh, let's get more. Yeah, sure. I'm hey, I think it. we can afford a rest, um, and and I might do it here just because. Have we taken all the easy pool fights? Uh, we. Uh... One, two, I... I can't remember. I, I don't I think those are both events, actually. I think those are... Because I think we got Big Fish, and we got um, three faces. Transform, remove, or upgrade, right? What? Oh, yeah. yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Big Fish. Yeah, cool. So so that means the easy pool fight we can... Or, or are we going middle? Uh, Yeah, I was, I was going middle so that we can go up to this elite. Yeah, I agree. How much damage is the Shining Light event at Ascension 2? That's the one that's upgrade two cards. Uh, ooh, <laughs> I'm not gonna be able to remember it off the top of my head. Yeah, I, I know that it gets into the 20s after Ascension 15, but I think we're safe here. In that case, maybe it is upgrade one and then we rest after. Mm -hmm. Because we can live through an easy pool fight and no particular event will kill us other than, ooh, what about Pantsless Adventurer? Can we take on an elite right now if, on 19 health? Uh, with the two backstabs, unless it's the Sentinels, <clears throat> specifically yeah. with the fire potion, I think we'd be fine. Okay. 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 Then we can get away with upgrade. Sure. Let's do sure. it. I like? I'm now on the on the neutralize. I like it a lot. Yeah. Especially we didn't take sucker punch. It's like more neutral or weak saturation, right? Mm-hmm. Nice. nice. You're a I fan of it. the smiling mask over the yeah. sapphire key here? Yeah, yeah, I like smiling mask a lot. Um Silent frequently gets to a point in the later game where she becomes very hungry for removals because you've got some core strategy that you want to do faster. Mm -hmm. And so being able to get those later and later into the run is great. And that could have been a regal pillow. And then our rest is much better, right? Mm. And then also she starts with two extra cards, right? So she's got like a little bit more clutter initially as well. True. You still okay with and upgrading? We have an elite and an easy pool fight, and we have a fire potion. Mm -hmm. um, I would upgrade a backstab, I think. Ooh, I like it, I like it. I I, I put those pretty yeah. low compared to like a, a cloak and dagger, but yeah, you know, I'm, I'm into it specifically in this if circumstance. If cloak and dagger gives us more block, but it doesn't. And I think more damage out of backstab is more block for us. Phantasmal Killer would be a great pull from that. Are we? Are we becoming a shiv deck? We, I don't, I don't, I can't, I cannot <laughs> propagate the rhetoric of the shiv deck. It hurts me, Rhapsody. <laughs> we may be a deck that has shivs in it, mm -hmm. but we are more than just our one feature. You're right, we're a cloak and dagger deck. That's right, we also cloak. I'm okay with it. We want more block saturation for the next fights because we're not fighting Gremlin Knob and we have Guardian. So I think it's solid. This fight is scary. We could, we could, if we're not careful, we could certainly die here mm -hmm. with 19 life. I like having Happy Flower on turn two. Yeah, that's, that's pretty big, especially with the card draw left in the deck. Yeah. I'm also looking at the fact that Neutralize is left in there. I wouldn't want to yeah. open up on a turn with, uh, with Neutralize. Sorry, I, I want to open up on a turn in. with Neutralize, rather. Yeah. Oh man, Strike Dummy is so good. We did as much damage this time with no potions as we did against the first Lack of Mm-hmm. No vulnerability. Don't need it. Do we Are open you the box? into the neutralize? I I do like backflip, but are we opening the box? Because if we're opening the box, should oh, yeah. we open the box first? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We should open the box. Oh, okay. Oh, wow. Never mind. We don't have to backflip. <laughs> that's awesome. Wow, that's really huge. Yeah, you're gonna that's be weak all the turn. fight. Actually, yeah. hang on. Do we? One sec. Let me just. Yeah, I. We take no damage this fight. That's right. So this is a really good point to talk about upgrades because I have a lot of people when I'm streaming say, isn't it too risky to upgrade here? 
right? Like it's your health is below. It's risky not to upgrade, in my exactly. opinion. Exactly. Exactly. The more rests you take, wow, that, that's an easy pick. <laughs> what did he just got the frozen egg. Well, <laughs> well, that's pretty good. That's. I'm not mad. I'm extremely not mad. I would, I would rest here. Yeah. I would rest here. But that. There you go. We solved block for the rest of the run. That's pretty sweet. <laughs> Uh, wow. All right, so here's here's a play I want to pitch. <laughs> okay. Set him to twenty nine. Okay. That's it. Leave a backstab in the deck. Set him to twenty nine. Backstabs good sure. damage later. It gives us an extra turn next turn where we get to set them down, invalidating their attack. Sure. I like it. I like it. I like I like to do guardian stalling sometimes, particularly like if you have poison going on, you can get a lot of value out of guardian stalling. I like it. And 29 Close enough. Uh, yeah. I also want to backflip to see if we get the distraction. distraction. Just, yeah. Nice. It's too bad C&D is barely too much damage there. Yeah. Just a touch. Distraction, what do you got for me? Poison. It's It loves adrenaline. Look how many rare cards we're getting, though. Cards are produced from card generation, like Distraction and Dead Branch, in the same way they are with Transform. You were just as likely to see a rare card as a common card. Hey. I also like the idea of just leaving the uh, adrenaline for a later turn that needs it. These Pretty strong opener. All kind of immediate things that just follow naturally. Uh, do you yeah. take two damage to get nine here? No. No. I don't think we have to. Ooh. Okay. And it and it lets us live through a couple more whirlwinds or something. We've got wraith form to close out the end game too. Mm-hmm. That's a good point well made. Now, this might be a place where I take damage to get the shiv out of the draw. Mm -hmm. Oh, but you don't take the damage to get the, the dagger spray damage of 12. Yeah, it's tr it's tricky because we didn't manage to find any true scaling damage, right? Like mm -hmm. we didn't find a single poison card coming into this fight. So you do have to take some chip to push down. Um, but, and we did play the other backstab. Uh, and we rested. You could dagger spray here. I, I yeah. think that's fine. It's it's a good upgraded card. The point you were Fire making about uh, it out. the point you were making about scaling is exactly the one I was considering. Of I'm happy to take earlier damage if I haven't got a game plan for how I'm going to be closing out the fight. But you did also yeah. talk about Wraithform being the way we'll do that. Yeah. Once we need to get through sixty, right? Like once Guardian gets two phases down the road, our answer to dealing with the turn three attack is just be invincible. Just Pretty strong answer. Don't be attacked. Just don't take damage. Exactly. Oh, I mean, you could have just told me that. That would have been a great game plan for me to, to internalize ages ago. <laughs> See, don't I've been a fool damage. over here just taking damage. Forgot that I should have just not taken damage. That's right. That's right. It becomes so simple. <laughs> it's simple. Just win the game. I really like the way in which the different bosses in this game test different styles of deck building and play. And Guardian is one of my favorites because Guardian is the fight in Act 1 that I think people feel is the safest and the easiest. And my finding is that that actually backfires sometimes because Guardian is also the fight which most punishes low block saturation mm -hmm. or low front-loaded damage for turn 1 and lack of consistency, right? Hexaghost will kill a lot of runs if you can't get enough scaling. And Silent really struggles with Slime Boss because it just asks a lot of things. But Guardian has killed many of my runs when I came in too confidently. Guardian like, also has the extra impact of, it, it makes a lot of your uh, your shiv cards significantly worse and you have to constantly run the like the math in yeah. your head of is it okay for me to shuffle this shiv card back into the deck for the next cycle deny myself a draw just so yeah. i don't take the damage this turn that's is more this the relevant in the turn recessions. by the way is it because 12 9 21 25 we have the ability to get the enemy on the ground and backflip we even have the ability to play a strike or a cloak and dagger after that Oh my gosh, we do so much damage. I forgot about Strike Dummy. We're, we're, we're like actually quite strong, aren't we? Mm-hmm. One, two, that, and then Dagger Spray for the full damage. Plus win near our next cycle, so we've got the Wraith Form coming up anyway. Nice. 
I feel like we're in the zone compared to the, there's it's, it's like a steady stream of just game happening. Yeah, it's I mean, I, I knew that the first episode was going to be a lot more of, of getting to kind of uh, getting more familiarity with each other's play styles. Obviously, it's going to continue true. throughout the entirety of it. But I also think it's partly silent. It's one of the things I really like about this class. She's so flowy. GG. Here we go. You know what I like about... <laughs> wow. <laughs> Come on! Is this... I feel that... I feel that I'm supposed to be teaching people how to play difficult silent strategies. Yeah. How difficult what? do you want to make it on yourself? What's in the deck? Uh, may I see, may I see our deck? It's 17 cards. one way of draw manipulation. 17 cards. With a backflip. Okay. There's one distraction. Okay. Okay. Well, look, here's the deal. I, I'll give you two options. We take the Wraithform Plus. It's mm -hmm. the strongest pick you can make here. Yeah. We're invincible for six turns. We literally do not have to think about block for the rest of the run, and all we do is look for more damage. Or option two. We already have one Wraithform Plus in the deck. We take Grand Finale, and we spend the next 12 floors figuring out how to get it online, and then we win with that card. I... <sighs> So I, I've got like a couple different considerations here. Uh, the, the two major ones are we've specifically been trying to stress consistency over the you know, right. flashy play. I uh, shouldn't murder my own message. Ex exactly. But then the inverse of that is if I don't take the grand finale, my comment section will riot. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's a fair consideration. You have to think about your career here, Rhapsody. That's a I good do. point. I do. I do. This this is a good solid run. This is job security. Yeah. yeah. I I will tell you this. If we take it, I I will be so present. I'll be my best self. I will try so hard to help us get this online. We can do it. I fully believe. I can't. I can't. Of course I can. You can't do it. You did it. Yes. We're doing it. We're doing it. Are you kidding me? I'm Let's so do it happy. live. Let's do it. Okay. So does that mean we take curse bell? <laughs> okay, well, uh, okay, I would like you to sell me on that because uh, <laughs> I, I recognize defense is our problem and if we're going to be playing a setup deck, we're going to be in the fight a little longer. So giving the extra enemy uh, enemy extra strength is a, a little bit of a, a, a dangerous proposition. Um, sure, sure. This is also a calling bell though. Yeah, calling bell, it, it puts a curse in your card. But uh, look, look, look. There was a time. This is a, this is a relic that people are very anchored on. There was a time when Calling Bell said, gain three relics and three curses. Mm -hmm. It was borderline unpickable. I don't want to say it was unpickable. There's a situation for everything. Duvudal. But <laughs> that's it. <laughs> it it now said, yeah, yeah, Duvudal, like maybe maybe you've got some Darkstone Periapt plan or you've got an Omamori online or something. Oh, yeah. But it now is one curse, and it's true, it's an unremovable curse. Like it is, it is slow down for your deck, and we just took Grand Finale, so that matters. But you get one common, one uncommon, and one rare relic every single time. It's oh, a lot of power. They're split across. I haven't taken it yes. enough since the update to know that there yes. is a rare always in there. There's always one of each category. It's a lot of power. And one of the cool things about Grand Finale is that you frequently don't need as much energy to do damage. Mm -hmm. You're spending energy manipulating your deck, but the damage itself comes out for free. And Wraith Form is such an efficient form of block that you can probably get away with three energy here. Mm. I, I think I think that the Philo Stone is a reasonable pick. Wraith Form, I think, offsets the plus strength, and extra energy makes it easier to do things like Acrobatics Chain mm -hmm. to get a good draw for the Grand Finale. I also know that looking at three relics can be a lot of block from things like he, uh, Horn Cleat. It can be a little bit of extra card draw from some way. It's just, it's a big burst of power. And it's very relevant if you can mitigate the loss of energy. So uh, you're talking about these in, in kind of like a more broad and general stance, but uh, talk to me about specifically relics and the silent. Okay. Okay. Interesting. I feel, I feel led. I, I, I'm, I'm, you, I think you have a follow-up thought and I want to hear what it is. Um, I, I think that silent is not usually the most relic hungry class compared to the other. <laughs> Ooh, okay. I, 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 I don't, I don't. I, I think the most relic hungry classes are Ironclad and Watcher. They use their front loaded potential to take lots and lots of elite fights to snowball through relic synergies. And I think that 
silent and defect are much frequently, more frequently able to substantiate a run on the back of their deck. And you don't really need block relics that much if your block plan is wraith form. Mm -hmm. Except that you still will have to live for a little while against the heart, right? And doing things like picking up a tungsten rod is really, really significant. The other things you can get from this are like, you can get an art of war from this. You can get a uh, source of extra card drawn ink bottle, which is going to be a pain to play around, but is a really powerful kind of thing. Mm -hmm. y you know what? Let's split the difference. Let's take Philostone. I actually think Philostone is likely to save us more life than Curse Bell here in the immediate term, and it buys us more room to set up the grand finale. I'm okay. good with it. So, but the, the curse spell is good, and I, you may be underpicking it. it. It's it's really solid. I I, I may well be. I, I value energy very very highly. Uh, sure. The thing that's tipping me towards the Philo Stone in particular is not just the enemy energy manipulation, so uh, or rather uh, the draw manipulation mm -hmm. that we're going to need in order to get Grand Finale active, but it's also right. having because obviously draw is going to be put in the stack anyway for the Grand mm -hmm. Finale. Mm -hmm. uh, it's having the ability to draw into the Wraith form and still play yep. it and still play it. Yep, that's huge. And right now we can only do that when we're on a Happy Flower turn. Mm -hmm. That's totally true. And it makes it really easy to take Runic Pyramid, and there is no better boss relic to take right now than Runic Pyramid. Love to see that after the next boss, but that's going to be the next video for the moment. Uh, there is the uh, link in the description down below to the other two videos that will comprise this run. Hopefully uh, you've been enjoying yourselves, and hopefully we'll see you there. Cheers. <laughs>